Are we up and running? Good morning, good morning. It's not frozen, it's a screenshot from two minutes ago. <laughs> Here's the reality. <laughs> this is the video. He was here. He, he drove away literally like 30 seconds before the stream started. So what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? So I just thought I'd catch a screenshot. <laughs> I don't know if this is his new schedule or not, but there it is. The garbage guy's early too, right? Look at him. He's got his new truck. He's usually here around 8.30, 8.40. The morning routine here on Dok Dori in Asaksa. And either the garbage man last night who, I don't know what he did. There's the three garbage cans there. It's from the oyster shack next door. And either the garbage man just couldn't care and he just threw him down on the sidewalk, which is not really likely or perhaps some drunk came along and kicked him, I don't know, no idea. No idea. Typical morning in Asakusa. It's a bit cloudy today. It's a bit hazy and cloudy. The good news is it's warming up. It's getting warmer. Morning, morning. Is the paper out? There are three packs out this morning. Let me see if I can remember what they are. Ayumi-san, she's been off the past week or so because her family's been hit with influenza. This is now, this is a double punch here in Japan. It's not corona. She's got influenza. I forget the number of it, whatever. So her family, her two kids and her, she's been out. So she's picking up again today. She's printing the Woman with Umbrella, the Meiji era Kuchie reproduction in our catalog. <coughs> and Subisan is coming today. She's still working on the number 61, the Sumida River, the one with the, the fish, the little white fish. And Dechan is here, and she's still working on Hokusai number two. Her first batch came through last week. Hokusai number two is here. Why is the top-down camera laggy? Top-down camera, not sure what you mean. You mean this camera? Is it laggy? No idea. If it is, then we know how to do that. We just unplug it and plug it back in. Should we try that? Hi, hi, lousy frame rate. Okay. I'll unplug it and plug it back in, so don't panic. I told you what I'm doing. Somebody's complaining the main camera is off. Like, I know the main camera is off. Okay, all right. So. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. The audio, whatever, the audio looks okay. The audio from outside looks okay. Three cameras. I guess we're up and running. Okay, where were we? So, this is your first sneak preview, right? You haven't seen this before of the Hokusai, the second print in the Hokusai series. They will be on their way. Actually, today's March the 2nd, and they will be flying out from Ome today, the first batch of them. Very, very quiet print. We're going to be rotating. There's noisy prints, quiet prints. This one, the carving is absolutely spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. I'll be talking about this, the little story I wrote that goes with the print. We've got dots on the ground. We have got dots and texture on a tree trunk. We have dots and texture on a different kind of ground. We have dots and texture in the sky, and Chonsan has killed it all. Every kind of foliage, the, the, this kind of leaves, this kind of leaves, this kind of leaves, they all have different tone, different taste, different texture. This is a master class in carving. I am green with envy. This is way, way, way better than I can do. They've traced it masterfully, Chon San and De Chan. They've carved it masterfully, and this is printed on Tsuge, and it's come out jet black. There's a, we got to do a video about this print, absolutely. It's going to go out right now without too much explanation, but we have got to do a video on this. Remember some years ago in David's Choice when I took one of our Kuchie and I did a whole 15, 20 minute video on one print. We could do this again, absolutely, we could do this again. There's so much to talk about. There's no better way to describe it. It's a master class in printmaking. There might be people out there who'll think you're kind of a boring little print. 
no. And it's up to me to grab them by the sh shoulders and tell them why it's interesting. Okay, what are we doing today? I know it's not a carving day today. It's a desk work day today, and I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can you know, give you some guidance which of these jobs to do. As you can see, because the Baron is here, I have some embossing to do today. We also have to talk about the Mario. Let's save this a bit, Mario. We have to talk about the rickshaw cart. We have a question about block wear and tear. And a couple of people have written in and sent images. Remind me, let's do this a bit later. There's probably not enough people here yet, but when more people have come in a bit later in the stream, remind me and let's talk about the block wear and tear. Someone's asking, is someone taking video of Asuka Sensei? The British Museum is here next Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday they are here shooting me, interviewing me, talking to me, watching my work, watching me trace, do something, maybe print. And then on Thursday, we're going over to Asuka Sensei's place with the team. So the British Museum people are shooting Asuka san on Thursday morning. And I believe Taran san has also been shooting some video of him. So, yes, there will be lots of video of. Uh, what's this? Oh, show and tell later, 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 later. What's this? New Meishi. Later, 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 later. Oh, what's this? More show and tell. Later, 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 later. This is funny. It's nothing to do with our work here. I was in Ome Tuesday and Wednesday. I went out to Ome Tuesday soon after the pool and spent two days out there. We'll talk about what I was doing out there a bit later. But when I got into my room there, the tatami room out in Ome, last time I was there, I don't even remember when I was in that room autumn or something I don't remember <laughs> on my desk my desk is right under the overhead light and there was a, an object lying on my desk and I couldn't help think I should bring it back because I want to take a peek at it under the microscope nothing to do with our woodbot printmaking work it is a gone and lost dragonfly and it was lying on my desk right in front of me right under the overhead light and obviously the question is that the story is he must have come into the room through a crack somewhere or through the front door flew around the house couldn't get out again because it's all closed up and dried and desiccated so later on i'm going to have fun i'm going to take a peek at this under the microscope nothing to do with our printmaking dried out totally dried out i haven't been in that room since i don't know september october and Japanese winter, Tokyo winter, is dry, dry, dry. Flag and dry. Oh, very nice, very nice, very nice. <laughs> what do you call that when you switch two letters around? Dragonfly becomes flag and dry. There's a name for those. I don't remember that. I don't remember it. For the bonus points, what's the name for that? Spoonerism. Yes, 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 John. Congratulations. Eggs flying this morning all over the place. <laughs> Uner spism. <laughs> hey, work, work, work. Okay, the two jobs, three jobs waiting for me this morning are this. When I was out yesterday, somebody uh, sent some prints. There's a new batch of prints that need checking. And these are waiting. We have orders outstanding for these and we need them in the shop. So this has to be done today. There's a backstory I can't tell you. I'm sorry. It's too, too embarrassing. <laughs> too embarrassing. Okay. So I have to check these prints. What should we do? For? Okay, here's the three jobs. Checking these prints, making sure they go through, picking out some chitty. I also have to, and this has to be done today. We have people waiting for these. I have to sign. I have to add my signature to another batch of Solitudes prints. We did some of this about a month ago. Remember Mafalda-san was, was visiting one day and while she was here, oops, what's that? I was signing some prints. So this has to be done today. And then the third job waiting for me, let's start with that one. The third job waiting for me is I have to emboss the great waves. 
My God, people have been waiting years, years for these. Well, more prints for checking. People have been waiting years for these. Let's do this this morning. This is the embossing on the Great Wave. It's not a hugely interesting job, I'm sorry. Maybe we can park part way along and look at some other stuff, but this has to be done. They arrived here last weekend on Sunday and Ayana-san is getting edgy. Dave, when can I have the waves? Understandably, she's got so many people waiting for them. Here they are. We will go through the same question every time we get these prints. How are the blocks doing? And the blocks are doing really, really, really well. So we close up. Should we zoom in? Let's zoom in here. This is the latest batch. I, I don't now know the count. We are well over 3,000 prints on this. The usual places we look to try and find block wear are these small areas down here, the small straw. There's a little place here that's got a double line, a double dot. That's the first place I check each time. The double dot is still there. Yeah, we're talking about, when I talk about that double dot, what we're talking about is this place. It's just Dave's little personal way to check, the first place to check on these blocks. There's straw here, 10, 10, 10 dots, dots, and here there's a little double dot. And this is one of the places actually that I talked about in the earlier videos. Because on the Metropolitan copy, I forget which is which, on one of the Metropolitan copies the double dot has become single, and on one of the British museums it's still open. So this is the place I check each time. And we still have two dots there. Next place we check, over on the other boat, we check the tip of this boat, because that wears out really easily. And then on the back of this boat, here's another place we check, this place. It's way out in the wide open, it's very thin lines, it gets hit by the baron, it gets hit by the brush, this area at the back of this boat, and the, the, the oars, this is an area that would really show wear and tear quickly, as well as these faces. And as you can see, I don't know, you call it, I don't see any, is there any reason, anything you're looking at there that's wear and tear that I shouldn't send this print? I don't think so. The blue areas are still rich in blue, the faces are there, the registration is still perfect. I tell you, if I told you that this was print number 100 or something like that, if I lied and told you that, you'd believe it. You'd have no way of telling. How about the calligraphy? Wear and tear? This is the key to these blocks, you know, and it's a bit now a bit of a paradox. The, the standard story is woodbuck pinch, you can only make a couple of hundred before they wear out, blah, blah, blah. We now see it's clearly not true, but it's only not true because we are printing this in a very, very special way. We never do more than 60 copies at a time. And in the old days, in the production runs, they did that all the time. They would never do just 60 copies. Never. That's, that's warming up your block from their point of view, 60 copies. But the problem is once a block gets wet and you're rubbing it, that's when the wear and tear kicks in. And we, we don't allow that. Just when the block gets nice and soft and soggy, that's when we quit printing. Any update on the guy from the Middle East with his print? No, it's waiting for me to write back to him. 
He's probably there's probably mail in the mailbox this morning. When's Dave gonna write back to me? It's waiting for me. I've been away for a couple of days. I haven't done anything in my inbox. Okay, here's the setup. We're going to have a wet cloth, a damp cloth at one side. Someone says, Has I, have I gone to, have I went to Iwanistan? I'm going tomorrow, if, they, uh, if they're cool with it. Tomorrow is my day for Iwanistan, for going up to Fukui Prefecture. It's doable, there and back in a long day. If I get up about five o'clock, hit about a six o'clock train at Tokyo Station, I can be up there just before noon spend three, four hours with him and get back late at night. It's doable in one day. I'm really looking forward to the new train. It's not a rough train ride. It's two, it's two trains. It's the Shinkansen from Tokyo down to Maibara. And then it's the, I forget the name of the local train. It's the local express. Shirahama Jinai, that's down in, no, I don't remember. Shirasagi, no. I don't remember. There's an express train that runs from Maibara up to Fukui Kanazawa area. So no, it's a very, very peaceful train ride. I get lots and lots and lots of work done. But when the new train kicks in, the Hokuriku Shinkansen extension, then it will be much easier. I go to Ueno, one train directly to Iwano-san's workshop. Crazy. One train from my place to his place. That'll be up and running next year, the Hokuriku Shinkansen. It's already, the Hokuriku Shinkansen is running, but it doesn't go that far yet. It's going to Takefu. When's it opening? Next year? Okay, let's have a look at this. What are we doing here? Let's get started. Talk, 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 talk. Okay, again, to show you what's going on, the people who haven't seen it before, what we're doing here. We're embossing the names into this print. Hope you can see it. We've got three people involved in making this print. The top one says E, picture, Katsushika Hokusai. The second one is Hori, it's Horibur as usual. Horibur Deibido, we get our full names on these. And this one is Suri Kawaii Chiharu. She gets her name on. So the three people who combined their, their efforts to make this print all get their name on it. And that's my work now. There's 60 sheets here. Shinkansen Nani. 2024 in the spring. Is that the Hokuriku Shinkansen? So we have one more year to go till it opens, and then 500 more years to pay for it. I have really mixed feelings about this Japan, you know. It's, we have staggering national debt now. It's, I think it's one of the worst countries on the planet with national debt as a proportion of, of GNP or GDP, whatever. Does that matter? I don't know, because we have this staggeringly wonderful infrastructure. So I get to use the Hokuriku train and my grandchildren will pay for it. <laughs> I don't know. Someone says, I don't use soap. What's the question? I don't really know what to say. I just, I, of course, I wash my hands. I was in the pool today. Well, after swimming, I went into the shower room and, and got, got washed up, but I don't pump, pump, pump and use the soap. I just use the water. And I don't know. Things become clean. I don't have a hill to die on here, just I don't like this stuff and I don't use it. And it seems like frequent application of water, I mean I am clean, frequent application of water does the job, it seems.
Where will Hokuriku Shinkansen, well the part that's already in, in running, it goes from Tokyo through Ueno Station up to, uh, what's the route, up through Niigata. And then it, when it hits the sea coast, it turns left and goes round to Kanazawa. And it will eventually go right round down, and I'm not sure if it's decided it'll come back down to my bottom maybe, or directly to Kyoto maybe. I don't know if it's been decided. It's a new sweatshirt. It is really comfortable. Sadako bought it for me for my birthday. So I've had it on and off since last November. It is super warm and super heavy. And you won't be seeing too much more of it because it's now getting really warm here and this thing is too heavy. It's a bit too heavy for today. It's been really, really useful the last few weeks in the winter. I'll have to go through these really carefully, one by one by one. Now, this particular batch of paper looks like it doesn't have too much chitty, but there is marks. There's, there's something. There, there's no sheets that don't have anything. My God, she's done a good job again. I can't believe we've got people this good working for us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Was it snowing in Canada? I didn't uh, see any snow down in the city where we were. I think the week before I got there, Vancouver had a big heavy snowfall. And I think just the other day they had a snowfall. But while I was there, there was no falling snow. We went to, we went on a small hike and a walk in the snow up in the mountain. But no, I didn't see any snow. And here in Tokyo, I haven't seen any snow either. I understand in Tokyo, they had a couple of days of it while I was away. So this year, Dave has avoided the snow. I haven't seen any snow falling at all this year. <coughs> and now that it's March, I think that's probably it. So this will be a year without snow for me.
depends on the light, you know, sometimes they show more. There is a big thing in the middle of this one. It's all, it changes with the light, you know, that's frustrating too, you know, it will look nice here, maybe I send it out and the person who receives it has a different light. That picture on Instagram with the snow, that wasn't Whistler, that was Cypress Bowl inside Vancouver, inside North Vancouver. It's inside the city, basically. And it wasn't that cold at all. We were working, working hard, hiking there. Up, 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 down, 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 down. There is a waiting list. I don't remember the, the, the if you go to the it's on the website, I think, if you go to our Mocha Hong Kong shop. It's there somewhere. But I can't be too optimistic. I'm sorry, you know, there is a waiting list. We, we are allowing names to go on it, but honestly speaking, I cannot be too optimistic about this. For quite a long time now, more people have been joining on any given day than we ship on average on any given day. If someone asked you when these wave prints were published, would I say 25? That's an interesting question. It's just, it's how you play with words. We published our wave, yes, in, did we get it in 2015? Is that when the first batch went out? So if I would say that, I would say it was published in 2015. Any individual copy, they're not marked, so there's no way. If you look at some specific copy that's out there, you can have no way of telling when it was made. And that's the same, actually, with all of our prints, except the Ukiwe Heroes. We don't number any of our prints, and when you look at one years from now, when somebody comes up with a Mocha Hong Kong print, in what year was that made, there really is no way to tell. And I'm not bothered about that. That's the way we do things. We are making printed matter. We're not making, you know, limited art objects. So yes, you can't tell from looking at one of our prints. Archivists cursing you. Too bad, too bad. We make prints to bring people pleasure, not for academic research purposes. <laughs> you don't have to document every single thing you make. I mean, who does that? You know, but whatever, this tool, we bought this tool, this baron. I don't know when it was made. The, the, the shirt I'm wearing, there's no documentation on when it was made. Said the guy who documents everything. What can I say? I, I keep track of what I think needs to be kept track of, and I don't keep track of other things. What can I say? Okay, let's do this then. Let's interrupt this program, because the, the point that we're bringing around here and talking about, let's interrupt this program to look at this. We've got lots more embossing to do, but let me sidetrack for a minute then and look at this. A few days ago on this stream, a few days ago, was it, was it Monday or was it Saturday? I don't remember. I was doing more embossing like this. And I embossed these prints from Kubota-san. And to recap this, for those of you who weren't here, I was embossing these prints. And when we got to one point, I think I was showing a nice close-up like this. This is one of the prints. And somebody in the stream pointed out an interesting thing on the print and asked me, if this was a defect. Here in one place on this finger, we have a place where, how can I show you? <laughs> Here in one place on this finger, we have a place where it seems that this part of the black line is missing. 
And the question was, is the block wearing out or has the block become chipped? Well, I have two images to show you here. Two more images. I went upstairs and I pulled out from my files. We've got here one of the very first uh, proof copies. When I sat down to do proofing on the blocks, I did four prints and then four more and then four more and I number these. And these, this was sitting on my desk open out there. Look at the difference in, in paper tone. This has been sitting in the open on top of a shelf for, it was 2012, so it's 13 years, and here's the new one. Anyway, this is print number nine. And on print number nine, we see the registration is no good. This is still a proof copy. The red is, uh, the red is misregistered here slightly but we see the same gap. But I received a photograph from one of our stream members here. Rod San, are you here today? In the stream today, uh, do we have, I forget, El Rod San, Rod San, I forget the... Maybe he's not here. A longtime collector of our work sent in an image. I'm going to click it up here. Here we are. Here's his image. He sent this in. And it shows his copy as having that finger a little bit more extended down. Can I, can I get them both up at the same time here? Here. Here's the gap. And his copy seems to show that top line extending a little bit farther down into the gap. I can't poke at it because it's just in an image here. And he is saying it looks like his copy is older and the wood is there and the newer copies, this gap is here because a piece of wood has broken off. And I don't think so because as I said, this copy is 11 years old, this copy is brand new and they show a gap and Mr. Rodsan's copy doesn't show a gap. And I think what it is is the printer being a little bit harder on that place. It's the same blocks, absolutely same blocks. And if you look up here too, look at this. Look at this little line inside the finger here. And then over on the other copy, I think the printer has used just a shade, maybe a bit more pigment than necessary, and printed a bit heavily. If you looked at the print side by side, you're not going to notice any difference. gaps in the hair. So I think that one is a shade too heavy. Should that have been rejected? Would I have noticed it when I just opened the batch and looked at it? I'll tell you right now, I didn't notice it because obviously it went through. Should that have been rejected? I don't know. All I have is this massive uh, enlargement, so I don't have a regular image of it. But there it is. I think I think the blocks are fine. This particular copy in this photograph That's all I've got. It's a, it's a it's a clipping there. That's all he sent me. So that's all I have. I don't have the full uh, the full picture. Maybe he can send another picture. Is he here today? Obviously not. I guess he would have joined in. El Rodson, are you here? No. Anyway, the gap is normal. It's part of the drawing, part of the carving. It's the way Jed's brush worked. Jed doesn't draw a finger up and a finger down and moving along. Jed draws the finger with a left-hand side, then a right-hand side, then picks up. The brush picks up, puts down, picks up, puts down. The lines don't all join each other.
This is another paradox with our work, you know. We're making our woodblock prints. The goal is to make them all exactly the same, as perfect as possible. We, of course, can't do that, but the goal is perfection. You sort of keep it in mind, try and make them all exactly the same. But the prints we send out have come across my desk. I've looked at each one and said, hmm, that can go. Do I compare every single line of every single print against some perfect master copy that we have here? No. <clears throat> I do just what you see me doing here today. The print package comes in, I look at it, I cast my eyes open it, over it. I look for specific places that I know may be causing trouble, and then I sit back and look at it. Are there any defects? No. Bing. Pass it through. And that batch of prints, the, the, the ones we saw the other day, bang, 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 when they're all the same, away they go. So would I have looked at that print and thought, hmm, a little bit heavy touch by the printer? I don't know. I perhaps wouldn't even have noticed at the time. You've got a batch of prints. They all look okay. There they are. So it matches Jed's brush strokes. Of course, absolutely it matches Jed's brush strokes. That's the idea. We see the same thing here. If, if anybody's confused about that, just grab any, any print or any image that was drawn with a brush. And the brush strokes don't go together like pen lines. The brush strokes are brush strokes. I don't know if I can find an example, whatever, just, just in, in, the, in, in these lines of these pieces. You know, it's stroke, 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 stroke. And they don't line up, they don't join up. This is not a, a work with a pen, a graphic designer's pen. This is a brush. Someone says, have we considered having a reference print on hand when reviewing fresh prints from blocks years ago? We absolutely do have reference prints. For every single one of our prints, we have two or three or four. We have what's called a mihon. I know the printers need this. And of that, Mar that rickshaw cart print that you just saw, when I sent the job to Kubota-san, even though he's done this a dozen times already, or five or six times already, I sent him a batch of fresh paper, I sent him the block set, and I sent him the Mihon, our master Mihon, which we keep on file here. And then that goes out to him, he looks at it for the colors and the lines, matches it, and it comes back. The Mihon then goes back into the file, out of the light, out of sight, out of mind, and it sits here until the next time. So yes, we have master Mihon, what's the word? Sample, guide, master copy. We have these for all of our prints. And what we also do, is when we get a batch of prints back from another printer for the first time. Hang on a sec. So the Mihon file upstairs has our, our Great Wave Mihon. And then it's also got a print from Kubota-san, one from Yamamoto-san, one from Chihara-san. We keep a Mihon for each one of the different printers who's worked on the job. So for some of our popular prints, the, the crane in front of the sun or whatever, the Mihon file is thick. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten in there. Absolutely we keep that. We, you couldn't run a publishing company without this. Someone's asking, how come I live in Japan? Well, I came here to learn about printmaking, learned about printmaking, became a good printmaker, and stayed to live. It's a very congenial country. Japan is not famous for allowing a whole lot of immigration, but they also do allow some immigration. <coughs> Were the Mihon done in the old days? This is an interesting open question. When we look at any given ukiyo-e print from the past, we, the, the copies that are left over, we find huge, huge variation in them. And it would seem that they had much... It would seem that they had much looser, what's the word? If I say looser standards, it would be, you know, they didn't care so much about that. 
if, if somebody could try and experiment, well, let me do this myself. Hang on a sec. If I go to, it's easier to do this than to ask you about it. Here, just for example. Okay, here we go. I'm going to copy you a link. This is from a 20th century print by the Doi Hunger Company. We have a copy on the desk here, right? What did I do with it? Just I showed you a few minutes ago. What did I do? I saw it one minute ago. Here. This print, the Tago Bay print. The link I just sent you is a link to a page of many, 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 many copies made over the years of this same print. And most of those copies, except for mine, were made by the Doi Hunger Company. And look at the variation there. There's bright ones, dark ones, light ones, blue ones, purple ones. There's all kinds of variation. Clearly, the Doi Hunger Company didn't, what can I say, didn't care or didn't think it was important to maintain a single master copy and have all the prints match it. We are trying to do this. So we do keep a mihon for everything. The Tuggo Bay prints in the catalog, I forget what number it is, 200 and I don't remember, 272? I'm sorry, I don't remember. It's there on our website. So the variation between prints in the old days, they didn't care at all. Moving into the 20th century, reputable publishers tried to keep control of it. I think if you go to that same ukiwe.org website and look up, say, a Hasui print that was published by Watanabe, I think you will find more consistency. Watanabe, in general, would want to keep, uh, keep closer to their samples. And I would guess that they have a big Mihon file with lots and lots of prints in it that are used for reference when making a new edition. Doi hung up because they, there was never a single person in charge of it. After Sadaichi san died, his son took over, now his granddaughter took over. They don't understand printmaking, so they've lost control of this idea of a mihon. In some of your blogging, you talk about Matsuzaki, Matsuzaki Keizaburo. My understanding is that he's passed. I didn't hear this news. I saw him, when would I have met him last? A year ago, maybe? He could have passed away within this last year. I don't know. I'm sorry. His son, Hiroshige. I'm sorry. You may have newer news than I have. I don't know. I'm not really part of that uh, guild anymore. You know, my name is on their membership role, but I really don't have too much connection with those guys. So it's quite possible Matsuki-san could have passed away and I wouldn't hear about it. It's quite possible. His son's name is Hiroshige, yes. Different kanji, but yes. I wrote about him in my newsletter. There's an there's a, there's a interview with Hiroshige-san in my newsletter, going back about, I don't know, 30 years ago or so. Over on the woodblock.com website, the section about the newsletter, Shakunin Isho newsletter, and the corner of visiting a craftsman, there's a visit there to Matsaki san and Hiroshige.
Has anybody been counting? Are we through the 60 copies here yet? <coughs> Has someone got a link there? Okay, this is Matsuzaki-san. That's fine. Then there is also, if you look in the same section later on, there is also another story that is Hiroshige-kun. So there's two, there's two specific stories. The one you've linked there is my first visit to Matsuzaki-san. Someone's asking about this nominative determinism. No, I don't think so. Because, if you remember, the original Hiroshige was not a printer. He was a person who drew pictures. He never touched the actual sheets of paper. So if Matsuzaki-san was trying to get his son to be an artist, yes. But if he was trying to train his son to be a good printer, no. Nominative determinism. <laughs> I think the story that you're looking for there, it probably says a visit to two young craftsmen or something like that, because I visited the two of them together. Hiroshige-kun and, uh, what was her name? Suga-san. She wasn't called Suga-san. Koike-san, a young carver and a young printer. Please make it Origins Part 3. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's on my list of things to do, but it's not a high priority. I'm sorry, it's Beginnings. Ne? We have Beginnings Part 1, Beginnings Part 2. It's, it's time to do another one, Part 3, but I'm sorry, it's just... There are so many things now. I missed the joke. I guess I missed lots of things. At that point, it's no longer beginnings. I know. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know when. The video thing now is just, it's just chaos. I don't even know what to say. I'm sorry. It's the second of the month here today. And in my email this morning, I got messages from Patreon. And I myself, uh, I'm, I'm on a bunch of different Patreons. I, I pay each month out to a few things that I'm trying to support. So I get the reminder every month, oh, you, your Patreon has done an automatic payment to such and such. And I remember, oh yeah, they're, they're, oh yeah, I'm still supporting that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm supporting these, these people on Patreon, a few of them. And of course, I'm the other way around. People are supporting our work on Patreon. But every month when I see that message going out, I get a real, I get a real guilt twang, bang. I got it this morning when, the, when I saw those messages. Again, Patreon has run, and again, people have paid us this month again to help support our work. And again, I didn't get a new video or get any, any content for them. Ay, 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 ay. The beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? Is that what you're talking about there? <laughs> Actually, the idea is, somebody's joking about that, the trilogy. The idea is a trilogy. There's one more video in the beginnings section which would really wrap it up as a beginnings thing and then leave it off there. And there is one more video still to come in the Remembering a Carver series. We had Remembering a Carver by itself. It wasn't planned to be any more than that. Then a few years later, I did Remembering a Carver 
the uh, what do you call it? When is the next one coming? Uh, I forget what I called it. I did it in part two. Remembering a Carver sequel. I think I did that right. And then there's one more plant. Remembering a Carver the epilogue because other stuff has built up over the years that would wrap up that story really, really nicely. There's things that I didn't know and didn't understand and didn't have information on when the first video came that have now wrapped up. So there is going to be Remembering a Carver, the epilogue. Won't be this afternoon. Do I have a TV block? Actually, we have a couple of TV blocks. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Forgetting a carver. Yes, there we go. <laughs> no, the epilogue. It's all, it's all pointed out, the points that I want to bring up and the things I want to say. And you think you cried on the first one. Man, you better get your handkerchief ready. Do I have Ito San's TV block or did I give it back? in one of the videos we had lots of prints in the collection made by Ito-san. Of course we do. We've got prints in the shop by Ito-san. What Nabe-san did, uh, she does her flea market Fridays. About two months ago she did a flea market Friday with a bunch of prints by Ito-san. There's lots. Any given day in the shop here. There's any number of them. We have tons of prints from that era. 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. The guy worked all his life here. There's tons of them. Kind of quickly maybe pop one up. I don't know. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Let's grab one. There's one right here. Here. Let me copy the link. These are not rare, not unusual, not at all. What Nabisan is a bunch. If you want to see more than what's there, just write write to What Nabisan and ask her. She's got a ton of them. What do you got? About ten sheets left here. What time is it? Eight fifty-three. Seven minutes before Hayano-san comes, I don't know. <laughs> she's waiting for these. If she comes and finds these are not done, she's gonna go batshit insane. She's waiting for these. So I think if she sees me doing this, she's gonna be happy, happy, one happy camper. I understand this uh, is it seems she's quite happy the last couple of days couple of weeks whatever when I got back and I'll, when I understand came to us she didn't really know the routines very well there was lots of new software so she's been working very very well but then when the shop opened 
and online orders hit. She's been crazy busy through October, November, December. And she got so crazy busy that she was like, Dave, I can't handle this. We need to get another person to help me with the job and stuff like that. And what she was seeing for the first time is the seasonal variation in our business. And I said, I understand, I'm not gonna hire another person to split your job with you because in January and February, it's gonna be next to nothing. We have to work with the flow here. There's sometimes it's gonna be busier and sometimes it's gonna be lighter. This is a seasonal business. Let's just learn the pattern. When you need help, call me. I know how to do your job. I can back you up, stuff like this. But no, I don't need to hire another person to help you with your work, whatever. And then now moving into January, February, it has. It's slacked off quite a lot. It hasn't gone to zero. She is still very, very busy. And she's busy catching up on a lot of stuff that she put aside, of course, in November, December. And she's learning the rhythms of the work, that that's just how it works, that uh, it is a seasonal business and sometimes there's going to be more stress than others. As our business gradually expands and grows and grows, it certainly is within the realm of possibility that at some point, yes, we have to split her job and get somebody else to do it. But I suspect now that this next couple of years, we are really not going to grow very much. We've had stunning growth for the, for the, before Corona, we had stunning growth. Corona knocked us back and now we've built up to where we were before. But I am thinking we are not going to grow very much more beyond our current level. When you look at it in US dollars, we did just about a million US dollars in sales last year. In yen, of course, but, but whatever, if you look at it in dollars. We can't do any more than that because we don't have the production capability to make any more prints. If we had an endless supply of prints, the sales could grow like crazy because our reputation is growing, we're gathering more customers, more people want our stuff. But the neck, the bottleneck, is not sales or marketing. The bottleneck is production. And we are really, really against it. So next year's sales, I'm not looking at any growth whatsoever because we simply don't have the products. John's got it, hire five more printers. Sure, it's like he just said earlier in the stream, what I should do right now is five years ago, five years ago, I should have started five new apprentice printers. We, we didn't know. We didn't know. Pessimism, to, it's not pessimism. I'm just describing our situation. I'm optimistic. I'm a happy guy. We're doing very well. People love our work. We're making beautiful prints. Nothing pessimistic about this. I don't care about growth. I don't need to grow, 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 grow. I just want a happy, stable business. So don't misunderstand. I'm not complaining. This is not pessimism. This is simply just describing our situation. I don't have to, you know, we've got no bank loans. I've got no VC people. The only supporters of our work other than customers are the Patreons. And all they ask is that we be happy and stable. They don't care about growth. They want us to be uh, happy in our work, stable as much as possible, and they're producing good products for society. That's what the Patreon type people demand, I think. so. So, if the best time was five years ago, wouldn't the next best time be today? Yes, you're right, sir. Good. I'll get right on it as soon as the stream's finished. <laughs> I'll get right on it, sir. Thank you. I forgot. Train new printers. Why didn't I remember that? I'll get right on it. Well, I've got to be careful down near the bottom of the pile here because she, I don't see any cut corners. But down near the bottom of the pile, this is where they hide. Well, not hide, but this is where they put the copies that are perhaps subpar. So I've got to be careful here at the end of the stack. I see some bad chitty. But I don't see any printing problems, so I can go ahead and put her name on it. Four. Oh, here we are. She's giving me a note. This is Yare. Okay, so let's let's go, let's go to those two, and let's have a look at them. Why did she say Yare? Let's have a look when we get there. What's this? What's this? Oh, it's Ayano-chan. 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 Ayano -chan. Ayano -chan. Huh? 
time did you come back yesterday? Oh, late, late, late. Like 6.15 and you didn't come back. No, 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 much later than that. Yeah, much later. So, 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 so. I don't remember. Uh, 7.30 or something? I don't, I don't remember. So I just dumped my stuff and had dinner. How you doing? Hey, waves, 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 waves. The show? So, yeah, so, so. I know you've been waiting for the waves. We were chatting about that. So, so, so. This is ayana san for those of you who don't know, the lady who works upstairs. If you're writing emails back and forth with, with us, this is the lady who has been answering, so answering them. Hi. She escalates them to me when it gets to be real trouble. She's escalated one to me yesterday, the young man in the Middle East, about the dots on the ah, great wave. Yeah, show. I yeah, 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 yeah. Remind me again so that I can get that done. So, okay. so, so, so. Okay. She handles most of it, but at some point, the big guy has to come. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I will try to reply to the, the first email. You well, know. yeah, no, of course, of course, of course. I'm not, be, I'm not being bad news, you know. At some point, there's a, sometimes a decision has to be made. Like this print, the, the customer didn't, wasn't happy with the print. Ayana san explained our policy on this, and he's still not happy. So at that point, no problem. It escalates to me, and I have to discuss this with the person. That's the way it should be. So no problem right. at all. No problem, no problem, no problem. You still got your, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. glasses? Did you, did you feel it yesterday? I know you don't feel it. No, um, but but I have to admit, I know, we were talking about the, the pollen allergy, right? And Dave is over this. He doesn't have this anymore, but that's right. not quite true. I was in Ome yesterday, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and Ome is surrounded by cedar forests, mm -hmm. absolutely surrounded. And I did. I got a little bit of a runny nose. Uh, yesterday I is the worst, I mm, think, so mm -hmm. far. But it's funny, out there, Ishigami-san, she was just streaming and rubbing her eyes and everything else. And uh, I did feel it. So I'm not 100% over this yet. But I should perhaps advertise uh, these glasses because people don't believe that these glasses actually work, but they do. They actually do. So if you were a You mean advertise to like our Twitch stream? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> what she's got, she's got glasses that have uh, a plastic nanny, side barrier. Yeah. Side barrier. Oh, and around the bottom too. So, so actually, it's like swimming goggles. Around. They actually touch your skin yeah, all the way yeah, around. Yeah. So I think the best way to prevent pollen getting in your eyes are, is wearing goggles or swimming. Okay. It's completely sealed. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> so I should talk to Ishigami some probably. Yeah, yeah, Anyways. Okay. So, so, Hi. So. So I'm almost over it, but uh, nothing. Yeah, nothing, nothing. So. Maybe like in five years later? I don't know. I, I'm <laughs> happy with this. I don't care. No, it used to be so bad. I used to stream. Like I was sitting there carving or working, and my nose is streaming. You know, just I couldn't. Right. Unbearable. Wait, so when you came to Japan, did you, did you have it already? Or did when, you I was a, when I was a kid, I grew up in the Canadian prairies. Edmonton, not so much. In Winnipeg, I got it. And there's a hay fever in the Canadian prairies. It's one of the things that they grow there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So yes, I had it bad as a okay. teenager. We moved to Vancouver, the West Coast, not so much. It's a damper ocean air environment. Mm. But when I came to Japan, it hit hard. So, so it okay, hit I'm hard. I'm wondering, like, um, you know, actually we're coming closer to the busiest season in the year, right? The uh, March and April. One of the busy seasons, yes. So, I mean, the busy season for pollinality. I mean, oh, they feel oh, plus oh. foreigners visiting Japan. Oh. But do, do they feel that thing? Flying? Talk to them, ask them, don't <laughs> ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Not different parts of that, I yeah. So I know I will have a number for you today. What I'm going to do as soon as the stream is finished here, I've got to do some signing of the my solitude. Somebody, uh, Ome wants those. She's in Siri. She gave me a stack to sign, and she said they're waiting for them. Yeah. They're not waiting. Well, did somebody give me a little white lie? She gave me a stack of, of my own prints. The the she's in Siri. The the solitude. Uh, she gave me a stack yesterday and said she wants them back straight away. I'm a okay. Is that not true? Oh. Oh, she said as quickly as possible, please. Yes, I'm not counting those. Oh, so I'm getting some little white lies by some of these things here. Okay, okay, okay. What I'm managing is like uh, the, the books, you know, the, not the print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, books. Uh, the book construction. Yes, Hi. yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, what I said, I'll, get, I'll have you. Uh, I'll have a number for you today. Okay. I'm going to split them into the three groups: the ones that we can sell online with minimal number of chidi, the ones that have just too much bark. We have to put them in the shop here, mm -hmm. and then the ones that have too much bark we even sell. So I'll give you those three numbers okay. later this morning, and you can start notifying people. Oh yeah, it's here. The the tamagoyaki. The show you want one? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Are there people waiting for that one as well? Okay, that one. Okay, but in general, okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk Bye. to you soon. Stream's over. Okay, thank you.
10 minutes to show and tell. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we've got these last two copies here. My God, I thought we'd get more done. She has marked them as Yare. Two copies as Yare. She hasn't cut the corners, and we have our usual conundrum. Why has she marked these as being unacceptable? Let's see. Can we zoom in? No, nobody can order one that goes to the shop. We've just had too much trouble. People get them and they say no. No, the shop copies are for shop only. So this is marked as, 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 as out, yare. Bottom boat looks okay. Oh, here we are. I get it. Do you see it? Do you see it? This must have been one of her early copies. Look, she's got a misregistration here. You can see the blue is off. That's all I can see on that one. Yeah, this is the blue off. <laughs> How about the other copy? Oh. The other copy, it's not that. The blue's okay. The other copy, she has a streak of pigment in the sky. This is not chitty. This is not the papermaker's mistake. This is a streak of pigment. Somewhere when she was brushing one of the colors onto the sky, she got a little bit of mess in one of her brushes. It left a streak in the sky. She didn't notice it. It printed, and there it is. I could maybe surgery this. I don't know. So she has marked it as a defective copy and she's not expecting to get paid for this and this is the difference between the yare and the chidi i give her 60 sheets of paper and i will pay her for all the ones where she has done the proper job the registration is good the colors are smooth it is a saleable print there's probably 58 sheets here i gave her 60 sheets of paper she would use a couple of warm-up sheets that throw away later just to get the colors going and then she prints so it looks like at this first inspection, I'll be paying her for 58 copies of this. The last two, she's marked yare. She's not expecting to get paid because the error is her error. It's not saleable and it was printer error. So I'm out the paper. I've lost a sheet of paper here, but I haven't lost a printer fee because I'm not going to pay her for this. This is all normal. This is not because Dave's a bad guy. This is the normal way. Now what we then do is with these out of the way, we've got the 58 sheets, I will send a message through to our accountant, Yamada-san. I will increase our inventory by 58 copies and I will send a message through and he will deal with her and get an invoice prepared and pay her for 58 sheets. But all of these 58 sheets may not make it through to sale. Some of them may have so much chitty so much paper garbage that we just can't sell this. I set it aside. But she has to get paid because that chitty problem, that's not her problem. I can't penalize her for the bad work by the paper maker. And I will then go to our accounting page and for each one of those that I'm pulling out of stock, I will delete them from our inventory so that the inventory control system works well. But she gets paid. Then the other thing, it, it doesn't happen with Chiharu-san and Great Waves, but in the case of some of the other printers, they're asking me for jobs to do. We will give them a job to do, and sometimes it turns out that they really weren't quite ready for that. We have, I think there's one sitting behind me here. We have a batch of these. We don't need the printer's name, it doesn't matter. These prints, I put a sample in, and when they came back from the printer, the person had tried, they'd done a good job, but it had been a bit over their head and the prints couldn't go out. I don't have a sample with me to show you the comparison, but the key block was too light. And so look at, look at this, the key block here was too light. There's a bit of misregistration up on the black on the mouth. They've used the wrong color tone for the, for the sun. They just weren't mocha hung on pink. Pink was way too deep here. So they tried, but it turned out no go. Over here. Yeah, there's the sample. So 
going to find a good good example here. So the the color difference. The sample had good stable printing on all these lines. This one, it's just too weak. So anyway, what I was trying to get at, the point here, that printer, none of those go through for sale. But for me to say, sorry, no pay for that job, I can't sell these, that would be stiffing a printer. We're not trying to take advantage of these people, we're trying to train them. So that's where we take that timesheet for that printer and we say, how much time did you spend on that job? We add it all up and we pay a good hourly rate for that one and that printer walks away being compensated. They didn't get paid for the job, but they got paid for the working time they spent. The prints here get put aside. And that's where we use things like our Patreon money and our trainee premium. You know, we've got on the website, we've got this thing we call the trainee premium fund. That's what funds these. So when the printers don't make it, when, they, when we give them a job, it's a bit too difficult and they actually can't, can't make it through to the end, they still get paid. So we eat actually a lot of prints. We eat a ton of prints. But that's the way it goes. Now that wasn't an outside printer. That was a printer working here. So I watched. We talked about this as we went through. It became obvious to me actually soon after we got going on this that it became obvious to me that these weren't going to end up as finished prints for sale. But at that point, we don't cut and run and throw them away. Okay, no, it didn't work. Let's cancel something else. I went through, or we went through, to the end of the print run. It's practice. You have to have the practice. So even though we knew they weren't going to be sold, we went through to the end. That person got the practice. They got paid for the job, for their time. And we we're all okay. When Dave gets his face on one of the poles outside, they will sell the bad prints. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> so, so. Okay, where are we? 9.13. We've got two minutes left to show and tell. Actually, we have. Let's just do this. Let's go to show and tell because we have a whole deck of stuff here to show. It doesn't matter. We can just keep pulling them up all day long. I've got so much waiting here. Here we are. Let's do this for show and tell. First, an easy peasy one. This one came up on Yahoo Auction a couple of days ago and nobody bid on it. I can't understand why nobody bid on this. Let me find the auction. Let me find the auction catalog here. Sometimes is this is shooting. What do you call it? shooting shooting something in a barrel? I can't remember what's the expression. Oh no, somebody else did bid. I can't say no. One person put an entry bid on this, and then I came in and took it away. This is, uh, your socks are safe. This is not socks off material. This is just a casual, small little auction item. What we have here are a couple more. You've seen these before. Are a couple more. Oh, it's a little bit unusual. It's a little bit nice. It is special. It's not socks off special, but look, 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 look. This is interesting. The cruise ship menus and cruise ship menus with a difference. Look, 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 look. You know what these are? Okay, these are woodblock printed menus from a cruise ship. We've seen these before. We've got hundreds of them in our collection. But this one, look at this. It's 
it's perforated at the end. I have never, I don't think I've ever seen this before. So maybe this is a copy that never got actually put out into the, uh, onto the boats. No, it must have gone onto the boat because it's got the menu, but it then never got its way out onto the table. They must print more than they need each day. Here we are. What's the date on this? Here we are. Monday, 1931. And where are we? Well, it doesn't say. It usually says we're in the Mediterranean Sea or in the middle of the Pacific or something like that. It doesn't say on this one. How about the other one? What's the date? November 25th, 19... Oh, it says China Sea. Look, 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 look. It must be from the same cruise. It's the Fushimi Maru. Here's the Monday menu. And then two days later, it's the same boat. And it's the Wednesday menu, November 1931. And we are in the China Sea. For me, the menu is more fun than the woodblock print. <laughs> I don't know. We've got to get some of these on the website, you know. We've got to get them up. Time will be put ahead 10 minutes tonight. Look at this approach to, to time. On Monday, the time went ahead 20 minutes. And then on Wednesday, the time went ahead 10 minutes. Is that how they do it on ocean cruises? Do they change the time minute by minute by minute or 10 minutes instead of one hour, one hour, one hour? You tell me, I don't remember. Last time I took an ocean cruise was 1957. We came from Liverpool to Quebec City. But I don't remember anything about the time zones. No jet lag. No, the English letters are not carved. This is normal metal type. They would have had a little printing press. They put metal type, they sort it out, and then bang, bang, bang. The English lettering here is printed with metal type. The woodblock prints are done in Tokyo and taken onto the boat in stacks. Then the lettering is printed on the boat and the menus are handed out to the people. It would have been the first class dining room. And here's our roots. They went to Victoria, yeah, look at that. Not Seattle. Oh, yeah, Victoria, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Manzan Manzanilla, Manzanillo, Panama Canal. Look at this, right down the South American coast. This is the NYK line, Nippon Yusen Kaisha. Liverpool, that's the same route I took, Liverpool to Quebec City. This was one busy company. This, of course, was uh, Japan. These places listed here, Truk, Yap, Saipan, these were part of Japan at the time. This is 1931. Did they put Liverpool in Ireland? I saw the name. I think this is where they did. Yeah, look at that. They put Liverpool in Ireland. Okay. I didn't notice that. Why would they put Middlesbrough there? What on earth is that for? The great seaport of Middlesbrough. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's put this away. There's not much content here. That, of course, is not woodblock print. It's the, the front side. We didn't even look at the print. I'm sorry. We didn't even look at the print. Vivian is asking, could we have flown in 1957? My dad went over first on a military plane, and then the family, my mother and us two kids, we followed on an ocean liner, the Empress of Scotland. I don't know if there were commercial flights in 1957. I have no idea about that history. My guess is no. So someone's asking these double postcards. No, they are menus and what happens is this. They're trifolds. You got your menu, you eat your dinner. After you've finished eating dinner, you can write a note to somebody. Dear Aunt Jane, having a great time on the China Sea. Wish you were here. You should have tried the smoked duck. And it folds up and then you put 
the address Aunt Jane, Middlesex, England, blah, 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 blah. And uh, somewhere on the this, on this ship, there must have been a little miniature post office on the ship. You would mail it in the ship and they would drop it off at the next port. So it's a menu plus little souvenir postcard. The woman on the right has two left hands, does she? No, uh, I have no idea what she's doing there. No idea. Where's, which is her thumb? <laughs> Ar artistic license. Artistic license. I don't know. <laughs> I understand. Have you seen these before? We have a bunch in the collection. Today's show and tell. Yeah, have a look at these. These are woodbuck prints from 1931. 1931, which is 92 years ago. It's hard to believe that stuff is 92 years old. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Ninety-two years old. Almost as old as I am. Someone's asking, what's the mask for? The protocol here in Japan is at the moment very much in flux. The general protocol in small rooms when you're together with other people is to mask up. On a train, masking. Confined spaces, masking. Outside, the government is trying to put a protocol forward that we don't need masks outside, but everybody is still ignoring the government. And everybody actually is still masking up. Let me just ask randomly here, ayano san do you think we should take off our masks and be finished? Uh, <laughs> outside, yes. Outside, yes. I don't know if the room is really small. Okay, there you are. So her feeling, just as a typical man on the street interview, woman on the street no, I don't, interview. I don't take off my mask, but it's just, uh, you know, I yeah. don't want people to think about, to think about that. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just asking you what you're feeling, because the government now is trying to change, right? The rule is when? March 13th. March 13th. Yes. Okay. They've tried to put a date on it. From March 13th, the new protocol goes into effect. What's the new protocol? No masks at all. It's, uh, it's your choice. Your choice, it's yeah. Your choice. It's not a rule so, or anything. There was a picture in the NHK News uh, two days ago. The, the governing party here, the Jiminto, the Liberal Democratic Party, they had one of their meetings. I guess it's their annual conference, something they're doing right now. And the final picture on the NHK News was on the stage, the Prime Minister, not acting as Prime Minister, he's acting with the, the, the Jiminto, no, Kaicho, Kaicho, non Whatever, whatever, mm. as the leader. And they were all on the stage and there was no, not a mask in sight. And they were all, ready, next election, banzai, we're going to win the next election, banzai, banzai. And hundreds of people in the room and no masks. So they are trying to sort of set their example. We think now we don't need masks anymore, so they're trying to set this by example, right. the prime minister. We still hear, well, you can see, she came in the room, I put my mask on. It's just, right. we've, we've three years of this now, that's how we feel comfortable. We need a, like, a, a rule, rule, like you can take That's what we're, take yes, mask. yes. Unless, like, Japanese people, like... No, look at other people yep, now. Yep, yep, it's not going to happen. We need the Hokkenjo, that we need the health center to set the new, here's the rule from March 13th, here's what to do. And that's not what they're doing. They're going to say, it's up to you. <laughs> and my God, we're going to be wearing these things for years to come. <laughs> I think. I'm spoiled, I don't know. Can you imagine now getting on a train with no mask? What would happen? People are going to just, they're going to move away from you. And they look at me. And yeah. Like, and if you got on the train with no mask, and if you did this, <coughs> that's it. That so, car will be empty seconds later. <laughs> so. Anyway, there we are. So at the moment, she's close by, so I have a mask, period. That's just the way it is. If you don't like it, I'm really, really sorry. And part of it is security theater, I understand. And part of it is practicality. There are particles here that are not flying around the room because I do have a mask, even though it's not airtight, of course. So go easy on me here. This is the culture. I live here, and it's best for me to fit within the culture. Whether or not you think a mask is necessary or not, I'm not you. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, let's keep going. We have another item here. And this dates from about the same era. This is from the era, pre-war era, of heavy Japanese tourism. We saw those boat menus. Tourists were pouring through Japan in the 1930s. And we have, this next item is from the same era. There is no uh, date on this one, but it's from almost, I would bet on it, this is from the 1930s. And look who the publisher is. And this is actually, too, this is a woodblock print as well. 
the Osaka Land Transportation Bureau under the Japanese Ministry of Transportation. And this is the people who were handling these pe the people who are handling tourist promotion at the time. And they are trying to offer value for tourists coming in. It's an awkward font, yes, because it's English carved by a Japanese carver. And what we have is a set of 12 woodblock prints published and or promoted by the Tourist Bureau. Is this readable? Let's have a look. This is not ukiyo-e printmaking at all. This is not shin-hanga printmaking at all. This is, I don't know, in my own mind, I have a feeling of this. This is Kyoto-style tourist printmaking. These are all woodmark prints. They're cut and printed. And some of them have outline parts in the old ukiyo-e style. And some of them are more blurred and, uh, and modern. It's a real blend of the two styles. You have chromozylography spelled wrong. So, and we have them like this. They are printed on very thin paper. <coughs> and considering their age, 1930s, and a very, very bad pulpy background, this paper has survived very well. Let's zip through so you can see what's in this set. Try to get it lined up here. I can pull these smaller. One sec. We have 12 prints in the set, and absolutely Kyoto tourist style prints. Let's have a look. It's not a blurry edge, this is a gradation. That particular part printed gradation down and gradation down. Same thing here, the sky is gradation ground. This is an actual carved edge, a little bit blurred. This is Kiyomizu in Kyoto. And because this whole set was published by the Osaka Bureau, you are, you are going to see all these images are from the Kansai district. No, that was foxing. The top left one, somebody's asked, that was actual damage. And this seems to be the only one of the set that is damaged. It's the one that was on top. The other ones don't seem to have any of that sort of damage. This is not great art. Oh, here's Akasaka-san. Hi. Hi. Good morning, sir. Hi. This one is nice. Very simple. They're really what they are. They're basically sort of picture postcards. I can see the original for this. So you can imagine somebody in the tourist bureau taking some photographs or picture postcards, sending them out for being to have prints made of them. They're very much just like photographs. They're not really artistic at all. He's like Jed, no faces. I'm not sure who designed these. I know there was, in that era, a fairly well-known designer, somebody called Wada. And I don't know. If I was going to guess, I would say these might be from his workshop. But I really don't know. I'm sorry. In the packaging, there's no mention of a designer whatsoever. Each one has the title. It has Sarusawa Ike. And then there's sort of a, a, 
a character mark here, which I, it's, it's stylized. I have no idea what it actually says. I'm sorry. So I don't know who the designer is on these. It's not my favorite kind of work. You know, the trees. It's a blobby green, blobby green. It's not Dave's most favorite kind of work. Shinaga prints I get. Ukiyo-e prints I get. This little Kyoto tourist style sort of stuff. Imitation of watercolor paintings. The original could easily have been a watercolor painting. It's not Dave's favorite style. I'm really not sure. What is this? Is that a bus? Is that an ambulance? Is it a Roomba? You tell me. What's this? Robots. Zombie apocalypse. I don't know. What are we looking at? I mean, it's really, really, really stylized. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm overthinking this. It doesn't matter. It's just very quick sketch work. Not my favorite kind of stuff. Pleasant little woodblock prints. If I had to put a date on these as a single date, I would just guess 1935. I could be off, well, I wouldn't be off much later than that, but I could be off a bit earlier than that. I'd say 1935 or so, if I had to just date it. No, this is not Tokuriki, no, 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 it's not his style. Tokuriki also is Kyoto tourist stuff, but it's not like this, no, no. This is much too, uh, Tokuriki would never be this blurry and this blended. He's got more, he's more brush strokes. He puts his brush on there, bang. Yeah, somebody's mentioning the New Yorker, the show? Yeah, okay, New Yorker, <laughs> same era? <laughs> and I, yeah, somebody somewhere along the line has put parenthesis on a couple of these. I don't know why. Two or, three or, two or three of them, I noticed. So it happened back here too. Somebody put parentheses on this. I don't know why. And the last one, number 12. Moon Michael. So all in all, very pleasant. If it was you know, not too expensive, it would have been a very nice. Uh, it would have been a very nice tourist package. Very nice souvenir of the Kansai. I have no idea how much it would have cost back then to make these. So there we have it. Thank you very much, gang. Okay. Here we are. It's Thursday afternoon. Today is Thursday. I, my apologies for no real printmaking work yet. I still don't know what I'll be doing the next stream on Saturday. I've got the surfer girl. I haven't opened the box yet. I'm sorry, people are probably asking about the surfer. I haven't even opened the box. It's triage. Every day, just triage. Sorry. Anyway, so I'll be seeing you again two more days. We'll have one job or another job. There will be a stream on Saturday. What there may not be a stream, this is heads up. Saturday, stream. Monday, stream. Then the British Museum people are coming and they're going to be here Wednesday filming me in this place, which is no connection with you guys. But then on Thursday, me and the British Museum people are going out to Askasan's place in the morning. So it looks like perhaps next Thursday stream, one week from today, next Thursday stream might be cancelled. I have no provision for taking my cameras over there and filming and doing a stream while the British Museum is filming Askasan. I have no mobile facility for this. Anyway, so we'll talk about that on Saturday and or Monday. For now, I'll see you in a couple more days. Let's put the outside camera up. Well, we'll definitely be posting about it and Instagram and stuff like that. But whether or not I can do a stream on Thursday, I'm really not sure. It's questionable at the moment. And now I got to get out there and I really think I'm going to pick up those garbage cans because that's kind of a little bit unbearable. The, the Oyster Shack people won't be here for another hour or so. The weather looks better. It was looking overcast a couple of hours ago. It looks much, much better. Oh, tell you what, 
let's do this. Give me, give me, give me 10 more seconds. I am going to move the camera because we have some cherry blossoms outside. Give me one second here. Oops. Did you see the sakura outside? There we go. That's our Jugatsu Zakura. It's called an October cherry because it blooms twice a year in March and in October. It's an actual cherry tree. Okay, that's enough. I'll see you guys later. Now, signing off. Bye for now. See you next time.